With this video, we'll talk about the publication process, searching strategies with databases, as well as some information about using databases. Okay, if I go to the chemistry and biochemistry online guide, This is a good starting point for finding out more information about a subject area. If I click on the Articles tab and click on the Flow of Scientific Information, this diagram gives you some information about information moving from idea to that of publication. Now, the first thing most researchers do when they have an idea is to jot it down somewhere or add it on their computer. They then talk to their colleagues or buddies over different social networking tools like email and texting or just over coffee. So the idea is talked about and then it's sometimes brought up to the lab, particularly if a researcher or the original researcher may have a lab, so they may want to just try it out to see if it works. And this process here is sometimes referred to as the invisible college because only a few select people are aware of the idea. Eventually the researcher will need to apply for funding. They need money for things like hiring people, hiring students, buying glassware, buying chemicals and so on. Once they attain their funding, they can then go back to the lab and carry out the experimentations. Eventually the results from the lab work are presented at different conferences or various presentations. Then sooner or later the researcher will need to write up the idea, that is the results of the experimentations from the lab work, and this goes into the form of a manuscript. So the manuscript will generally contain an abstract, an introduction, a methodology or experimental section, a result section, discussion and a conclusion. And at the end you probably have some references as well. Once the manuscript is written up, the researcher will want to publish it. And they want to publish it because they want to get the credit for the idea and they want to share their information. So they want to get all the awards and everything else that goes, goes from the original idea. And in order to do so, they need to publish it in a journal. In order to publish it in a journal, the manuscript goes through what is known as a peer review process. The peer review process involves experts in the field looking over the manuscript and then determining whether it's worthy of publication. So the general protocol here is the manuscript is sent to the journal editor. The journal editor then sends it out to a few reviewers. It could be two, three or four. And then the reviewers read over the information, then give feedback to the editor, telling the editor what they think of it. They can say, this is a brilliant piece of work and worthy of publication in this journal. Or they can say, I don't believe any of it. Do not publish this in this journal. Or they can say, pretty good, just make these changes. So the editor gets the feedback and then decides whether or not to publish it. Now articles and other document types are often refer to as primary sources. If we go further down, Eventually, the information in articles and other document types can be cited and talked about in review papers and monographs. Monographs are sometimes referred to as books. And these types of documents are often referred to as secondary resources. Now, a review paper is an overview or summary of a topic area. So it covers everything that's been written about that topic in the literature. It's a compilation of all articles and uh, books and other document types. 
a review paper would generally not have an experimental section. This compares to an article, which is an original piece of research, and it will generally have an experimental section. Okay, eventually the information in review papers and monographs, known as secondary sources, gets mentioned or talked about uh, in uh, encyclopedias, dictionaries, textbooks and handbooks, and this is usually just one short paragraph. These types of document types are sometimes referred to as tetri sources in the scientific literature. Now, if you think about information, where do you go about searching for information, for articles, review papers and so on? The best place to search for information is through an academic database. Now, resources like Google and Wikipedia are often suspect because a lot of the information there has not gone through a peer review process. Wikipedia, at the end of some of the pages, you do find some good quality work, some peer reviewed journals and other information, just to, just to let you know. If I go back, now as I mentioned, uh, we have a whole host of different resources available for you to uh, search for information. Now, as you know, a database is a collection of information. The way most databases search is through the use of Boolean operators. If I open this slide, this slide shows you three main types of Boolean operators, and or not and you place these operators between keywords to narrow or broaden search. For instance, with the end operator, coronavirus and vaccine, that will instruct the database to retrieve all documents that contain coronavirus and vaccine. And here you're narrowing a search. On the other hand, with the OR operator, you use that to broaden search, and you often use that with synonyms. These are similar words so you don't miss out anything in the literature. Hence, coronavirus or COVID-19 will tell the database to fish out all documents that contain coronavirus or COVID-19. Then we have the NOT operator. The NOT operator is used to exclude keywords. So coronavirus NOT vaccine will instruct the database to retrieve all documents that contain coronavirus but not vaccine and not coronavirus and vaccine. Okay, if I go back, the university provides you access to a number of different resources, databases that you can use to conduct your searches for your research. On the right hand side of this page, you can see a number of different links to different resources. If you go to the home page, I've placed these resources at the top here and at the side here as well, so you can easily access them. If I go back to the Articles tab and scroll down a bit, I'd like to conduct a, a scenario for this topic statement. Okay, so if you were confronted with this topic statement, the synthesis for Taxol in the laboratory, the first thing you will need to do is to think about the key words that stand out. Words like the, in, for, a. Those are sometimes referred to as stop words because they don't have much meaning. If I go to the next slide, those are the two key words that, are, that I've picked from the topic statement, synthesis and Taxol. Once you've selected those keywords, the next thing you'll need to do is to think about different synonyms and alternate ways of spelling your keywords. With synthesis, I suggested preparation, taxol. This is another name for taxol. If I go to the next um, slide, once I've thought about the keywords, you then will need to combine your keywords with Boolean operators. Here I've described synthesis as synth with a asterisk afterwards, as well as prep with an asterisk afterwards. The asterisk is sometimes referred to as a truncation term. So it truncates the keyword so that the database finds all different variants of that keyword. In other words, with synth, 
all characters after VH. So the database will retrieve synthesis, synthesizing, synthetic, and so on. So once I've constructed my Boolean string, I can then plug these in to a database. So let's go back to the online guide. Now on the right side here, under finding articles, I've placed a number of links to different resources and databases that are relevant for chemistry and biochemistry majors. If I click on the Home tab here, I've also placed these at the top here and at the side. You can also access the resources from the library website by clicking on the Databases icon. Now I just want to make, make a note that some databases are very subject specific, like SciFinder, which contains a lot of chemical information and very much relevant to chemistry. Other resources like Scopus, these are multidisciplinary, so they cover all disciplines, the sciences, social sciences and arts and humanities. So here we are now at the front page of Scopus. Scopus is a product from Elsevier. Now if I make this a little bigger. Now most resources or databases have a search box where you can type in your keywords. They also have a field option. This field option, if I click on the downward arrow, provides you information of different fields you can use to conduct a search on your keywords. So for instance, if I select article title, the database will search for those keywords in the titles of all the articles and retrieve those articles. If I click on add search field, uh, a new box will appear, the keyword search box and the field option box. And between them, you'll be able to see the Boolean operators. So you can select whichever Boolean operator you want to use to conduct your search. So let me put in the keywords from the scenario question. So for scenario question, if you recall, I'm trying to find the synthesis for Taxol sometimes referred to as Paclitaxel. And I've placed the keywords here, and between the keywords I've selected the end operator. Then just click on search. And the database has retrieved over 14,000 documents. In the center are all the documents. And on the left hand side, are different parameters that allows you to refine your hit set. You can also refine your hit set by going back to your search strategy. So just click on the edit um, link here. And this will go back to your original search strategy, your Boolean string. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the field option and I'm going to select article title. You can also select Add Search Field and add more keywords. And I'm going to use article title with the other set of keywords as well. Click on Search. And now I've retrieved 1015 documents. This is a little better. And on the left hand side, as I mentioned earlier, you can refine your hit set a little more by the type of journal, whether it's open access, the year of publication, the author's name, the subject area. Here you also have the document type. So it separates your hit set into different document types. Here I can see there's 923 articles from my hit set. and 20 review papers from my hit set, and so on. And there's other parameters that you can use to refine your hit set. I'm going to select article, then click on limit to. Now just 
and I will just leave it as 923 documents. Now in the center, those are your documents. These are all articles. Now each article will have the document title, the authors, the year of publication and the source. Followed by next to it is a cited by option. The cited by option gives you the number of documents that have cited a specific document. So with the first one here, this one has been cited 1014 times. And there's often a relationship between the research here and those researchers that are citing this specific document. If you click on the number, it will retrieve those 1014 documents. I will talk about SciFinder in the next video. With this search, I'm going to use Scopus. So if I click on Scopus, now you can also sort your hit set by different options here, from the newest, oldest, to the highest cited by, to lowest cited by, and, and others as well. Now each one of these documents has a view abstract, so if you click on that, the abstract will appear. It's got a find it button. The find it button goes to our catalogue and it will tell you if we have the full text available. Sometimes the full text is also available from the publisher's site so you can click on the view at publisher to see if you can access the, uh, the full text there as well. Next to this link is the related documents link. If you click on that it will provide the different documents that are related to this specific document so you can get more information about this uh, research. If I click on a title, say this one here, you will get to the record. The record is where the database has found the different keywords and different parameters and filters that you applied to your search and retrieved the specific document. Here you can see information about the actual article here, the title, the authors, uh, the affiliations. If you scroll down a wee bit, you can see the abstract. And at the bottom are the reference lists from this specific document. And each document in the reference list has a cited by um, number. So this document has been cited over 3,000 times, this one over 178 times, and so on. So you can get more information from the actual references within the actual document. On the right hand side, you have the documents that have cited this specific document, cited by 422 documents, and these are the documents. If you scroll down a wee bit, you can create a citation alert. So if you click on this, you will need to register with this database. And I do suggest everybody to register, because once you've registered with a resource, you have uh, the uh, more functionality with that resource. To register with Scopus, just click on Create Account. Now, this set citation alert, what it will do is, what, every time this document has been cited by a researcher, they will send you a link providing you the information as to who is actually citing this document and, and the document itself. Below this you have the related documents. On the left hand side you see more information about your uh, document. This is the type of document, the source type. You also have a DOI number. The DOI number stands for Digital Object Identifier and it's a unique identifier of a document, a bit like a social security number. One person, one social security number, one DOI, one document. And sometimes you use this when you're formatting your citation style. 
Okay, so if I want the full text of this, I will need to click on the Find It button here, or I can go back to my original hit set and click the Find It button here. And as you can see, it's gone to our catalog, and indeed we do have the full text available from this document, from this resource here. So this is the American Chemical Society Journal, so click on that. And this goes to the publisher site. Here you can see the HTML of a document. So if I click on the PDF here, so this is an example of a scientific paper. At the top you have the title of the research or of the paper, then you have the names of the authors that contributed to the research. Below that you often have the affiliation associated with the authors. If I scroll down a wee bit, the scientific paper starts off with an abstract. An abstract is a short paragraph that provides you the key highlights and results of that research. This paper starts off with the heading background, but sometimes it starts off with introduction. The background or introduction will give you um, background information about the research. Then it has a heading called Synthetic Planning. That's part of the experimental section. Then I come to the results of the discussion sections. These have been combined here. A lot of the time the results and discussion sections are separated. A lot of chemical formula here, schemes. And at the end you have the conclusion section. Following the conclusion section, I notice they have the actual experimental section. So this is what the um, synthesis of the different substances uh, within the paper. Okay folks, this is pretty much it. So that's the general makeup of a scientific uh, paper. You have the introduction, the usually the experimental, results, discussion, and conclusion, and then the references. Okay, so, so if I go back to Scopus, okay, what I'd like you to do is to, if you want to, create an account with Scopus, and also conduct a search on a substance on any substance and see if you can find the synthesis of that substance. Okay, that's it folks. Thank you for listening.